Hello and welcome back to the world of psychology. Exercise for depression or running away from bad mood. I just recently talked to one of my best friends who just broke up with his girlfriend and therefore felt very down, a little bit depressed. And I told him, well, because it's written in our psychology textbook, one first aid intervention could be to do some aerobic exercise, to, to go running, for example. But he was not really convinced. He said, well... I don't think this will work. Is there any evidence? For example, how big are the effects if you compare it, for example, to antidepressants? So give me some evidence and I'll give it a try. Well, I said, give me three days and I'll present to you all the data that we have today. And here we are, three years later... <laughs> Yeah, it was it was not possible to make it in three days. So uh, it took me about three weeks to get a good overview. But I think it was worth the effort because up to date there are really some very interesting studies that I want to present to you. The first study I want to present to you was published in 2009. It was a really huge study with 17,264 participants from all in all 21 countries. Participants were coming from Belgium, England, France, Germany, Greece, Iceland, Ireland, Italy, the Netherlands, Portugal, Spain, USA, Bulgaria, Hungary, Poland, Romania, Slovakia, Japan, Korea, Taiwan and Thailand. And in this study, published by Grant and colleagues, the researchers were interested in, and that's also the title of the study, the relationship between life satisfaction and health behavior, a cross-cultural analysis of young adults. So all participants in this study, all 17,264 subjects were asked, and now I quote, all things considered, how satisfied are you with your life as a whole? quite an important question and of course they did not only ask this question they also asked for example about physical activity did you engage in any leisure time physical activity in the past two weeks think about it any physical activity in the past two weeks that's really not much activity and therefore you might expect that almost everyone meets these criteria but this was definitely not the case. Of those participants who said they are dissatisfied, not satisfied at all with their lives, they don't like their life, of those participants, only 61% said they engaged in any leisure time physical activity in the past two weeks. In comparison, those participants who said they are very satisfied with their life, they they are happy with their life. 77% of those participants said that they were physically active in the past two weeks. The only other variable that showed similar results as physical activity, I mean other variables were for example smoking, drinking, the use of sun milk. The only other variable that showed similar dose respondent effects was fruit intake. So only 36% of the people who were dissatisfied with their lives said that they were eating fruits at least once per day and whereas those people who were very satisfied with their lives, of those 49% said that they ate at least one apple, banana, cherry, strawberry, whatever per day.
So this is first evidence, but weak evidence because it's just correlational and it's not telling us anything about the causal relations. From a psychologist's point of view, the next study is much more interesting, published by Goodwin in 2003. The, and that's the title of the study, The Association Between Physical Activity and Mental Disorders Among Adults in the United States was observed. So this time it's not about your overall life satisfaction, but this time it's about the correlation between physical activity and mental disorders like depression, phobias, panic attacks, schizophrenia, etc. Again, they had a really huge sample size. They had 5,877 US citizens aged 15 to 54 years. Physical activity was assessed by the question, and now I quote from the study, how often do you get physical exercise either on your job or in a recreational activity? Participants could answer with regularly, occasionally, rarely, or never. In the analysis, The category of regularly was compared with the other three categories. So they compared those participants who said, yeah, I'm regularly physical active with those participants who were never to occasionally physical active. The results were quite impressive because it turned out that those participants who were regularly physical active had a probability of only 8% to be depressive, whereas those participants who were, who were never rarely or occasionally physical active had a probability of about 13% to be depressed. But all this evidence we've been talking about up to now is not really strong evidence. It's just correlational. It doesn't tell us anything about the causal relation. So, for example, it's no wonder that those participants who are depressed are not that often engaged in physical activity because it's very hard for them to motivate themselves for leaving the house and go running. So maybe all this evidence is not at all speaking for a positive effect of exercise for depression, But maybe all this evidence is just speaking for a negative effect of depression on physical exercise. So we need a better methodological approach. And already in this study by René Goodwin, there is a better approach because they also assessed potential confounding variables like age, gender, race, family relations, education income, physical diseases. I mean, especially this is obviously a possible confounding variable because if you, for example, lost a leg in a car accident, it's quite logical that you don't go out running every day and, and it's quite logical as well that you could be depressed for quite a long time. So it's important to assess these variables as well. And it turned out when you control for all these variables, if you adjust for all these variables, regular physical activity still reduces your probability, for example, for a major depressive disorder for about 25%. Even bigger reduced probabilities of about 35% were observed for social phobia if you are afraid of what other people might think about you and agoraphobia if you are afraid of for example places with many people for example afraid of for example a supermarket scenario. So this statistical analysis is already much better. But it's still not perfect because maybe there are other variables that push the correlation between exercise and feeling better. So what we really need are experiments. 
we need an experimental design with randomized distribution of participants to one group being physical active, exercising, and another group, a waitlist control group, or even better, a placebo group. One of the first well done and very influential experiments was conducted by McKen and Holmes and was published in 1984 in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology. The title of the study Influence of Aerobic Exercise on Depression. 43 participants, and this is obviously one weakness of the study, but later on we will get to know studies with much more participants. 43 participants with major depressive disorder were randomly assigned to three experimental groups. The first group was the exercise group who engaged in so-called rhythmical aerobics. So two times per week for one hour they met to uh, go running, jogging or dancing. Besides that they were also told to uh, take extra activity outside of class. The second group was a relaxation placebo group. They were told just like the aerobic exercise group was told well there's evidence that exercise might improve depressive symptoms. This group was told, well, there's evidence that relaxation might improve depressive symptoms. And therefore, they met for four times per week for 15 to 20 minutes. And they practiced progressive muscle relaxation, PMR. I guess you've heard of it, you you make your muscle very tense, then you let it relax and this has a relaxing effect on your body. The third group was another control group. This was a no treatment group. They were just answering the question about their depression at the beginning of the study and at the end. After 10 weeks of running, jogging and dancing, a really huge effect could be observed for the aerobic exercise group. On average, people in this group felt much less depressed. In comparison, there was only a little numeric effect for the relaxation group and there was no effect at all for the group that receives no treatment at all. So from a historical point of view, a very important study because after this study, even though they had only a small number of participants, because after this study, much bigger and better studies, for example, comparing antidepressants and physical activity were conducted. And we will take a look at these studies in a minute.